This is a mock interview conducted by Forum IS Academy at New Delhi. The interview panel includes eminent professors, retired bureaucrats and other luminaries. The objective of the program is to acquaint the candidate with the format and expectations of the personality test conducted by UPSC. Please come in. Anushka. Yes, sir. Good morning, Good morning sir. Anushka. Please sit down. Anushka, you are from Kolkata. Uh, sir, I was born and brought up in uh, Shirampur in the Hooghly district. All right. Where are you now? Uh, I've been living in Kolkata for the past one year or so. All right. Anushka is a very famous actress also. Yes, sir. If you have to describe uh, uh, Anushka actress as, pers as, as a personality, how will you do that? Uh, Sir Anushka Sharma is uh, uh, an actress in Bollywood. Uh, I think she is a quite a strong personality. She has an army background as far as I know, uh, family background. And she has uh, stood in Bollywood on her own. Can you name some any... of the famous movies of Anushka? Uh, sir, uh, she debuted with Rabne Banadi Jodi and uh, she was also in movies like uh, Band Baja Bharat um, and uh, Who a, was few, a few with more. Him? With her, sorry. Uh, sir, in, in Rabne Band Banadi, ba Band Baja Baja. it was uh, Ranveer Singh, sir. Oh, very good. Hmm. And any other movie uh, which uh, she did very well? Sir, I haven't seen many of her movies. Oh, all right. Okay. So, you are optional in geography. Your studies have been uh, basically geography and then you did your MA in developmental uh, development studies. Yes, sir. Very good. That you passed out in 2019. Yes. So, what are you doing thereafter? Uh, sir, I have mainly been preparing for the civil services. Okay. But uh, apart from that, so, I was doing uh, some freelance work, uh, content writing for a company based in Kolkata. And also, sir, I did two small courses uh, online from MITx. So what were these courses, ma'am? Uh, so the first one I did was the challenges of global poverty. Mm -hmm. And That's the second that you have mentioned global poverty. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. And the second one was evaluating social programs or uh, welfare programs. So Anusha, Anush, uh, <coughs> Anushka, you did your schooling from Chandranagar. Yes, sir. Tell us something about Chandranagar. Uh, sir, Chand Is it Chandranagar or Chandranagar? It's uh, Chandranagar, sir. Chandon Nagar. Where is it? Uh, sir, it's in the district of Hooghly. Oh, it's right, okay. by the river Hooghly and oh, it's right. called Chandranagar because there is a the place called uh, Chandranagar. Uh, sir, I in am not aware. In uh, West Bengal, any idea? Chandranagar, uh, what was it famous for? Sir, Chandranagar, I have, uh, I not have not across. heard, sir. Chandranagar, uh, French. Uh, sir, this is the, this is the same one. Same place. It's the same place. Chandranagar, Chandranagar. Ch Chandranagar. Okay, so what was the association with French? Uh, sir, it was uh, a French colony and uh, there are even today there are many French buildings there. There is a, um, a quite similar to Pondicherry, there is a river bank uh, beautification done there by the French. It's called the Chandanaka Strand. Uh, it's very beautiful because uh, the river Hooghly makes a, a moon like uh, mm -hmm. bend there. Mm -hmm. And so mm. uh, there is the Duple uh, house there where the uh, French governor used to stay. Mm -hmm. uh, and so even the school that I studied in mm -hmm. was uh, established by French missionaries. All right. What was the reason for um, uh, ousting of uh, French uh, colonies from India? Uh, so there were many reasons why uh, the French, uh, so to speak, lost to the British because uh, <coughs> number one was that the French 
were controlled by the public um, public control by the king it was not um, driven by private uh, entrepreneurs and so <coughs> they um, didn't focus much on profit making from trade which the british did mm -hmm. and so also the british had more uh, efficient leaders at that time whereas the french mainly had to play mm -hmm. okay who was this uh, lady brabon <coughs> excuse me sir sure. um, so lady brabon was uh, the wife of the then viceroy of uh, Kol the kolkata or the bengal presidency mm -hmm. uh, the college of lady brabon was uh, set up in 1938 and it was 1938 yes sir so that time there was nothing like a viceroy of uh, the of calcutta uh, so so the governor of uh, Bengal. Governor of Bengal. And okay. uh, yes, sir. And so, uh, no, governor, governor will be that of uh, I India. Think, I think governor, sir. Okay. And her name was uh, Lady Doreen Brabon, and it was named after her. Mm -hmm. All right. So you are taken uh, Anushka geography. Yes. If <laughs> I ask you to compare Western Ghat with Eastern Ghat, how will you do that? Uh, so there are a few uh, fundamental differences. Uh, one being that the Western Ghats are on an average uh, of more altitude than the Eastern Ghats. Uh, <coughs> they are more continuous than the Eastern Ghats, which are the Eastern Ghats are broken by many east-flowing rivers, sir, such as the uh, Godavari or the Krishna, <coughs> and. Uh, so, as well as uh, the coastal plains that uh, adjoin the western ghats are on an average narrower than the eastern coastal plains. And what kind of uh, animals uh, you find uh, in eastern coast and what kind of animals you find in, uh, on the western side? Uh, so, the western ghats and the eastern ghats. Uh, so uh, the some of the animals in the western ghats that i can think of are <coughs> the um so right. i cannot okay. recall no, no. the differences at the moment you must have heard or read the story of uh, sam altman no sir you know who is sam altman uh, no sir i have not heard of open gii open ai uh, yes, sir, I have heard of OpenAI. What is OpenAI? But AI? I cannot. Uh, so, OpenAI is a company, as far as I know. Uh, it is working on <coughs> uh, promoting uh, artificial intelligence uh, among uh, the public in a way that laymen can use it to <coughs> make, uh, for example, the Chat GPT is a. Uh, Have you ever used Chat GPT? No, sir. I Why? have not used. Uh, sir, uh, I I didn't use it, sir. It's uh, not for any specific reason, but I just didn't get around to it. All right. Though you are done uh, geography, I would like to ask a question from history. Okay. Have you ever come across a term called Amarna lettuce? Amarna lettuce. Uh, no, sir. I can't say that I have. Have you ever heard this word called Amarna? Uh, no, sir. I cannot recall at the moment. All right. Now, that is in uh, Egypt. Okay. Amarna was the capital where, which was uh, the initial capital, uh, original capital was uh, Karnak. Okay. It was shifted to Amarna by Akhenaten. Okay. And uh, he started a new religion wherein there was only, only one God. So he okay. was a monotheist. He started okay. worshipping only sun. Thereafter it was abandoned and Tutankhamen was his son. Okay. Anyway, now let Thank us come you, back sir. to India. What do you understand or what is the importance of Rakhi Gadi? Uh, sir, Rakhi Gadi was uh, is a place in Haryana, in present day Haryana, which is <coughs> one of the biggest uh, 
excavations of the Indus Valley civilizations are and <clears throat> it is still being explored and uh, it has um, it it has uh, brought up many uh, precious artifacts and like many uh, sir uh, i i cannot think of uh, any specific ones like the ones in mohenjodaro mm -hmm. but i have heard that uh, terracotta figurines and the like were found there sir terracotta figurine which one uh, sir i do not know sir All right. do you think that uh, these cup panchayats, these should be banned altogether? Uh, so while I am not uh, completely aware of the uh, social um, angle of the cup panchayats on the positive side, I have mainly heard of it from the negative side such as the problems <coughs> in, such as honor killing. But sir, uh, I think Khap Panchayat should not be banned outright. They are uh, part of the integral culture of some areas in India. And maybe they should be uh, sensitized more or <coughs> they should have a better collaboration with the administration. But don't you think that these to... bodies or these institutions are extra constitutional? Yes, Why sir, should we allow are... them to have some authority on deciding cases or disputes? Um, so it might be that uh, some of the orthodox elements of villages in these areas might listen more to the Khap Panchayats than say constitutional bodies like even the Gram Panchayats. And in the interest of that, if we can make the Khap Panchayats work towards progress and development, then it could be used as uh, a good tool for uh, even but social progress. are they really progress, contributing yeah. to the development of a... Are these cup panchayats contributing anything to the development of the local uh, area? Sir, I am not aware All of right. this. Alright, my thing. last question. Do you think that's a good idea to have reservation for women in Union Public Service Commission examinations? Um, so, um, uh, I would say it might be a good idea in the short term. Because we, we have seen that unfortunately the uh, proportion of women in the civil services is low and <clears throat> What is the percentage? Um, uh, sir, I am not aware of the exact figure okay. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but I also believe that women are progressing on the basis of their merit also. So even if the reservation is done, it should be done on a, a time, on a time uh, deadline sir. Mm -hmm. And um, like, so even we see that but the parliament. When we did reservation for hmm. women in the parliament. Hmm. We didn't have a timeline. Yes, sir. When hmm. we did reservation for women in the parliament, hmm. we didn't have any timelines. Yes, sir. So why do you so, uh, why are you suggesting timelines for uh, women in the UPS exams? Um, <coughs> so I think. Um, all reservations should have a timeline because otherwise the progress of women will be uh, simply on the basis of reservation rather than <coughs> actually trying to empower them and give them agency of their own and it will be something uh, more on, on the nominal side than a real empowerment. Sir, right. Thank you Anushka. I'll Thank you, my sir. colleague to take over. So you have done uh, studies of uh, on poverty and <coughs> development studies you have mastered, right? <coughs> Give me your definition of development. Um, so I would say that development is quite a broad term and uh, more of a qualitative concept. Uh, it might inc it can include uh, both the aspects of economic growth as well as sir, sustainability in the sense of economic, social and environmental development where uh, the citizens of the country uh, have a good standard of living and they also have the political and civil rights um, available that might uh, that can give them a feeling of um, belonging to a country as citizens sir. 
What is the concept of this multi-dimensional poverty? Uh, so the multi-dimensional poverty refers to a, um, a measurement of poverty that is not based simply on the income side of poverty because uh, as many economists such as Amartya Sen have pointed out that poverty does not only mean uh, the absence of um, wealth, it also means the absence of assets and opportunities. So, sir, the multidimensional poverty index measures poverty on the basis of um, some certain assets uh, <coughs> such as um, the availability of portable water and housing, sir. What do you mean by sensex? Uh, sir, the sensex is a indication of, uh, it's a, a number that shows the uh, stock market um, uh, the stock market situation of the nation, sir, as, as far as I know, but I am not very clear on this idea. Sensex is going up, up and up. So can we say we are developing very fastly? Um, sir, we have seen that uh, in the recent times, the stock market is doing well. Uh, and some of the reasons for this might be uh, that um, foreign investors or even domestic investors are thinking that there is some policy certainty in the country because uh, sir of um, the government policies that are coming and even sir in the central and many of the state governments there is the same party um, but sir as uh, even scholars like Thomas Piketty have pointed out that simply because a country is developing on uh, stock terms or uh, GDP terms, it doesn't mean that the <coughs> resources are fairly automatically distributed among the population. Uh, so, so we do have problems such as inequality and uh, we are working towards um, eliminating this and uh, so, yes, sir, I would say India is developing, there are challenges, but we are working to... Um, we have two sets of data, my dear friend. Number one, only yesterday, one of the economic newspapers was reporting that there is a huge booking line for luxury cars. Huge booking lines, people are hmm. mad to buy. And secondly, we have a data with us where 80 crore people are being offered free food kind of schemes, right? Hmm. So, how do you explain this to different, rather opposing pictures of the economy. Sir, this um, comes back unfortunately to the idea of inequality, where <coughs> we have seen even during the pandemic. Is anybody bothered about equality debate these days? Um, I may have five mobile phones and hmm. you are having one mobile phone. You are hmm. happy with one mobile phone. Who cares I have five mobile phones or ten mobile phones? Do you really think equality is in debate? Uh, oh. Sir, inequal uh, inequality is being uh, debated around the world, yes, I would say. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, this gap has been increasing uh, <clears throat> in the post-globalization era. But, <clears throat> sir, w without equality, we cannot hope for sustainably uh, growing the economy. Because after all, the major demand of uh, the economy comes from the common person, sir. And uh, I think this is why equality is important e in the strictly economic sense. And also, sir, in the other sense, I think that <coughs> equality is important, not just as a ends, but uh, not just as a means, but an ends to development. Because <coughs> that is what development is, sir, that everyone has a good standard of life. They can uh, educate their children, they can eat healthy food. So, equality has been going up or going down in your assessment? Sir? Inequality is increasing or decreasing in your assessment? Uh, sir, uh, according to many scholars, as far as I know, inequality is unfortunately increasing, sir. Why it has not become a political issue? No political party talks of any inequality kind of thing. Elections are being fought and won on so mm. many issues, but mm. equality and unequality is not one of them. Tell me your analysis. Why is it so? 
um so it might be that <laughs> the people who are at the uh, bottom rung of the society or economy may not be fully aware of this issue uh, that can be raised as a political issue so uh, the information asymmetry might be uh, something that is a factor here so also <clears throat> unfortunately we have seen instances of vote bank politics uh, on the basis of caste or religion which um, which drives the attention of the uh, voters away from issues like inequality hello anushka hello sir uh anushka can you tell me what is the per capita income of uh, west bengal uh, no sir i do not know okay. this okay uh, and if uh, you were to take a guess whether it would be above <coughs> india's average income when average for all states uh, will it be above average or below average uh so if i had to guess i would say it is below average no okay and can you tell me what is the reason i mean at the time of independence for example if we consider uh, bengal had a very big industrial base especially in the textile <laughs> industry but since then you know it has almost stagnated the all the industry has moved out uh if i compare say other metros like mumbai mm. chennai delhi even hyderabad bangalore have come up you know they have developed and they are big source of you know jobs and opportunities but kolkata mm. isn't seen as that uh, you know in the, the kolkata is not put in the same you know if i mm. say same ring so why do you think west bengal has stagnated um so one of the reasons that west bengal has unfortunately stagnated is that <clears throat> like you said there has there has been a, a significant deindustrialization of uh, west bengal and this i have seen with my eyes around me sir because in hooghly it was a quite a big industrial base uh, of jute mills and cotton mills but these are being shut down now uh, there are problems of uh, trade unions uh, less investments on machinery and um, wages are low uh, <clears throat> there are there is no innovation in this so one of the reasons can be that um, the government has not put as much effort into industrialization and its development as it should have um, <clears throat> so this also has uh, some uh, negative im- impacts which also feeds back into the less development which is something like uh, the youth of west bengal are slowly moving out to these other cities that um, you spoke of so we okay. are okay all right uh, so if you were to say like you mentioned jute mills so if mm. you were to develop a plan uh, you know how to revive these mills and mm. you know actually this has been going on over the last uh, 20 30 years you know efforts are being made but still little is you know changing on the <laughs> ground so according to you what could work in you know reviving the jute mills or then maybe you know reviving the industry in the state um so one <laughs> some of the measures can be that uh, the government can come up with a solid industrial policy with policy certainty uh, with assurance that <clears throat> um, the ease of doing business will be there uh, for example with a single window clearance for industry uh, industrial investments and purposes um, so so um, a partnership of the public and private collaboration would be a good idea sir i think to bring in new technology uh, to have collaborations between the jute farmers and the industrialists um, and develop okay. uh, this on okay uh, these and lines. how about law and order uh, you know over the last uh, maybe decade or so west bengal has become notorious for uh, you know violence mm. beat political just couple of days ago you would have come to the news what happened to the you know ed officials were attacked so do you think law and order is also an issue why uh, 
industrialist might be reluctant to invest and there was this singur incident also hmm. so how can you you know address the law and order situation to attract the investment um so what you have said is unfortunately right that industrialists want a stable <coughs> stable environment uh, for for investment uh, so to solve the law and order issue i would say that uh, political parties need to come together to uh, ensure that these um, followers at the grassroots level do not <coughs> instigate violence against each other and um, so also to have a speedy justice system without uh, impeding uh, justice <coughs> in any way sir but it's the you are expecting the political parties to do the heavy lifting but aren't they the ones indulging in it in the first place so i think that is why they are the ones who have to take the uh, first step to okay resolve this okay uh, my last question uh, since you have <coughs> done this course from mitx uh, have you heard about no sir thank you have you heard about uh, uh, professor abhijit panerji yes sir uh, the first course that i did was taught by him okay so what uh, what is uh, what is his work for which he was awarded the nobel prize uh, sir abhijit panerji and esther duflo and as well as michael kremer were awarded the nobel prize for <coughs> innovating uh, randomized control trials for uh, evaluating um, welfare uh, programs across the world sir okay and are they being implemented uh, the learnings from there can you suggest an example where you know the governments can actually adapt those uh, trials or the findings of those trials uh, so one uh, example that i can think of is uh, when i was studying this evaluating social programs uh, ikbal dhaliwal who is their yes. colleague uh, did a, a randomized control trial for the karnataka government where they were um, testing whether biometric devices would uh, increase the attendance or efficiency of uh, primary healthcare centers and <clears throat> so they found that this uh, they were about to roll this out uh, across karnataka but they didn't do it on the other hand sir this same thing was found to be effective in rajasthan and uh, they uh, i think they implemented this in rajasthan but not in karnataka what is the outcome for the same thing uh, what was the reason <laughs> that it was not accepted in karnataka and it was accepted in uh, rajasthan uh, sir i think in uh, from what i remember uh the problem the root problem in rajasthan was more of the uh, fact that the health centers were sometimes closed most of the times closed but uh, in karnataka uh, the health centers were open but the doctors and nurses were not attending so in rajasthan when they implemented this biometric uh, thing they had more of an incentive to come and open the uh primary health centers whereas it didn't work the same way in karnataka sir uh, as far as i remember this this was what was explained what do we take home from this this experiment a uh, study so the comparison no you mean what what is the learning uh, so the i would say my learning was that uh, there can be <coughs> it is important to understand the root cause of where the problem is and then <clears throat> address the uh, cause accordingly but so, if you uh, install the biometric device even in the pcs of karnataka hmm. so at least the staff will start coming as you are saying that the clinic or the psc used to be open but the hmm. doctors and the nurses were not there hmm. but if you insist for the biometric attendance they will surely be coming uh, sir in this randomized control they saw that they were not coming because of a lack of motivation sir uh, intrinsic motivation was not there so uh, they i think suggested some other measures for no, for this no motivation but if you put these biometric devices to take the attendance possibly they have to come uh, 
so they didn't come according to this uh, if they do not come mm. they'll lose mm. their salaries and wages no no sir i think the salary is not linked to the attendance here all right please Yes, you sir. have completed your MA in two thousand nineteen. Yes, sir. After that, what you were doing? Uh, sir, I was mainly preparing for civil services, and uh, I was doing a little freelancing mostly. Freelancing. Content for writing. Content writing. Okay. Yes, fine, sir. Fine. So you have your subject is developmental studies, right? So can you tell the difference between governance and good governance? Uh, sir, governance is um, uh, uh, governance refers to the collection of mechanisms that um, ensure that uh, the running of a country is done, whether or not it is uh, inclusive and uh, uh, in inclusive of the people is uh, not really um, given. So, for example, we could say that the Taliban in Afghanistan have a system of governance for them, but uh, so good governance is in addition to this, it takes into account the <coughs> uh, inputs from the people. It tries to get uh, have good public service delivery. Um, it uh, is focused on the welfare of the people rather than simply imposing uh, something on them like a police state, sir. So you mean to say good governance is related with welfare, not with development? Uh, sir, it is uh, linked with both, sir. Okay. See, governance talks about strengthening of administration, strengthening mm -hmm. of state, and policy making, effective policy making. Okay. And what about good governance? Good governance along with state, there are so many stakeholders involved, right? Private mm -hmm. sector, right. civil society organizations, international mm -hmm. bodies, media, and so many other organizations. So state has to involve has to consult all these stakeholders yes. for effective service delivery for overall development of the country right yes sir so you see various state government <coughs> these days are offering uh, this uh, freebies while going for elections mm. so they are offering in the name of welfare Mm. Like many state governments like Karnataka, they are offering unemployment allowance to women, to young. So in such a scenario, how do we, how should we tackle this? See, in such a scenario, development will be crippled, right? We don't have funds for the development. Mm. All the money will be spent in the these freebies. So how do you see this? Um, so in the... Uh one of the Supreme Court judges in um, a case related to freebies had um, said that <clears throat> uh, you, uh, as far as I remember what he said was, you elite lawyers will not understand the uh, value of what you what we call freebies. Sir. So um, even though some people would say that it is a drain on the public money, um, I would say, sir, if um, the people are much below the poverty line, for example, uh, sometimes these freebies, as we call it, can become a matter of life or death. Uh, for example, sir, we saw this during the COVID. See, where before <coughs> this unemployment allowance, hmm. people were there, they were involved in some activity, they were doing some activity. Hmm. But if once you are giving that freebie, hmm. he will not drive an auto rickshaw. He will just sit idle at his, at his or her home and he will enjoy the freebie. So indirectly you are like whatever the demographic dividend we are having. Mm -hmm. You are like you are not using them. Otherwise they would have involved in the economy, right? Uh, so what you have said is uh, also a, a threat, a threatening side to this uh, idea. But also <clears throat> if the people are very poor, then sir, even a small boost can help them uh, get out of the cycle of poverty, sir. For See, example, See, there is a concept of social might... security, right? There is a concept of social security. Yes. So, social security schemes are fine. You are hmm. like, you are safeguarding. Hmm. But what about freebies? Whether we need freebies? Um, 
so it uh, i think depends on uh, what we are offering as freebies uh, if we are offering something that is not uh, that cannot be used to create more <coughs> then how capital, should we tackle that how should we tackle that um so we can evaluate we can uh, have a have a discussion on what can what can be given that as previous discussions previous? everything is fine what are the hmm. pragmatic steps see now this, this is like a trending every hmm. state government whenever there hmm. is elections hmm. every political party is offering if you are offering <coughs> 100 rupees i will hmm. offer 200 rupees yes in this way it is going right hmm. so how to arrest this what are the pragmatic steps now that there is need to be some action that hmm. should be taken hmm. so what should be that action um so i think uh, civil society and media also has a role to play in this where wherein if freebie uh, almost uh, freebies like uh, for example alcohol or these sort of things are given to even uh, the AT, even even the central government now it has it is offering uh, free ration for 80 crore people hmm. whether we need that uh so we have seen that uh, india is doing um, it has a dismal uh, score in the global hunger index for example it is at the 107th rank i uh, as far as i remember and so if uh, the, some of the poor people get some additional nutrition from this then uh, why not sir i think we have enough resources to uh, fund this So thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So can you step out for a minute? Yes. Thank you, sir. Anushka, you are a wonderful candidate. We found you very simple and sincere. A lot of innocence is reflected from your personality. Your articulation is good. There is no doubt. You see, everybody has got a different style of uh, mm -hmm. talking. Even if you are taking pauses, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter very much. As long as you are able to communicate your own ideas and your thinking, that is mm -hmm. good enough. I would, uh, we rather we would suggest you to have a little more depth in your subjects, whatever. Okay. Like especially economic affairs. Mm -hmm. 